and welcome to or welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so excited that you guys are here and I hope that you are having an absolutely fantastic morning, afternoon, or night, whatever it is for you when this video finally reaches you, you guys. Today's video is one that I honestly never thought that I would be making, but I hoped that I would in hopes that there would be a conclusion to this case and that is the disappearance of Madeline McCann back in 2007. Now I covered this case on my channel back in 2018 and went into the details surrounding her shocking disappearance and there were so many comments with so many different theories. And I am so excited to let you guys know that there has been what appears to be a massive break in the case and a new suspect that authorities seem convinced had to do with Madeline McCann's disappearance. So today, we are gonna dive into one of the most talked about missing persons cases worldwide, dive into the original theories, the details surrounding her disappearance, then get into the new theory, the new suspect, why they believe he's associated, and what they think really happened from what we gathered so far. So without further ado, let's get into the break in the Madeline McCann case. So before we get into the actual break in the case, I kind of want to start at the beginning and the details leading up to her disappearance, her actual disappearance, and the original theories because I always find it really important to kind of recap the entire case, especially when new evidence arises. But if you guys are totally up to speed on the case and you don't want to hear me talk about the details that are already known, I will have a timestamp down below that you can fast forward to to just hear the break in the case. So Madeline McCann has been missing since May of 2007. She was just about to turn four years old and disappeared during a family holiday in Portugal. Madeline was born May 12th, 2003 to Jerry and Kate McCann. She was their oldest daughter and Madeline had two younger twin siblings that were two years old at the time of her disappearance. Both Jerry and Kate were doctors. On April 28th, 2007, the McCann family went for a one week vacation to Praia de Luz in Portugal. They were staying at the Luz Ocean Club at a two story ground level apartment. Now the McCanns went on vacation with seven of their friends and all of their children. So it was just like a big family style vacation. Kate McCann said that she felt as though Portugal was a very safe place and they all felt what seemed to be very safe and comfortable on their vacation but they had a very unusual nighttime routine. Every single night at around 8 p.m., they would all put their kids to sleep in their rightful apartments, and then they would leave them alone as they went to the tapas bar and restaurant a little bit away from where their kids were sleeping, and they would have dinner and wine and take turns every 20 to 30 minutes checking on the children. Now this in and of itself had people's jaws dropping, but not only did they leave their kids alone in the apartments, they found that when they unlocked the front doors with a key, it was too noisy and it would wake the kids up. So they all ended up leaving their back patio doors unlocked, essentially leaving their children sleeping in an unlocked apartment alone. Now this blew my mind when I first dug into this case. It absolutely seemed like a disaster waiting to happen. I mean, if you think about it, Madeline was three years old and her twin siblings were two years old. They were in no way, shape or form self-sufficient for anything, even just including a medical emergency. But Kate McCann says that she never would have done this if she didn't think that it was safe and that nothing would go wrong. All I can say is, I mean, if I'd have thought there was any risk at all, you know, it, it just wouldn't have happened. And that's all I can say, really. And all I can say is it just felt so safe. You know, it was a family-friendly resort. It's the first time I'd ever been to Portugal, but all the family and friends I knew that I'd been there said it's, you know, it's a lovely country and it's really safe. And I mean, for the first few days, nothing did go wrong. It seemed to be working for them. They had their established routine. But on May 3rd, 2007, things would take a horrific turn. Tonight, Madeline's parents, Jerry and Kate, are still waiting desperately for news. And with every hour that passes, the questions only grow. The sense of the 
day started out like any ordinary day. We've heard that Madeline was playing by the pool and the families were enjoying the sunshine. At 8.30 p.m., the families put their children to bed in their apartments and headed off for their regular wine and dinner night. At 8.55, one of the friends named Matt was the first to go do his rounds to check on the children, and he did so and came back and reported that absolutely everything seemed fine. At 9.05 p.m., Jerry McCann went to go on his rounds to check on the children, and when he arrived to their apartment, he realized that the door seemed a little bit more open than they would typically leave it, but he assumed that somebody else had opened the door, didn't think much of it, and thought that everything was fine. On his way back, Jerry McCann ran into Jeremy, a tourist that he'd made friends with, and the two of them were making some small talk. While the two of them were talking, one of their other friends named Jane Tanner went to go and check on her children and she noted that she did see Jerry and Jeremy making conversation and chatting with one another. But she also saw a man carrying a blonde haired child in pink pajamas who appeared to be limp in his arms. She thought that perhaps the child had fallen asleep, which often happens on vacation, and that it must be the child's father carrying her. But the one thing that she did notice was that the individual was walking away from the apartments rather than towards them as if he was going to put her to sleep. But she didn't think it was anything that raised too many red flags and she continued on. At 10 p.m., Kate McCann went to go and check on the children. And when she did, she also noticed that the door seemed slightly more open than Jerry or herself would leave it. But she assumed that one of the other people who had made rounds might have opened the door up. She actually went to go and close the door and when she did, the door slammed almost as if a gust of wind slammed the door shut. She didn't turn the lights on because she didn't want to wake up the children, but she did adjust her eyes and that was when she noticed that Madeline was not in her bed and that the window was actually wide open. Now this freaked her out, but she initially thought perhaps Madeline had went to go to their room to see if they were there. So she started frantically checking the apartment and that was when she came to the immediate conclusion that Madeline had been taken. But here's one of the first, well, no, not the first. I mean, leaving your kids alone in an apartment was one of the first controversial red flags to people. But the second red flag was that she assumed Madeline was taken, but she left her sleeping twins and went running back to the bar restaurant to tell everybody that Madeline had been taken. They called the police at 10.13 p.m. and the police arrived at 10.30 p.m. So everyone was looking for Madeline frantically, but there was numerous mistakes that were made in the early hours of Madeline's disappearance, one of which being that the apartment wasn't deemed a crime scene immediately. So there was like over 20 people in and out of this apartment putting fingerprints everywhere and tampering with what would be vital evidence. They also didn't put any roadblocks in place until 10 a.m. the next day. Border guards also weren't informed for hours, and on top of that, they didn't put out a global missing persons alert until like five days later. So these were like crucial mistakes right off the get-go. A lot of people felt as though if perhaps they had taken the proper steps immediately, maybe more information would have been recovered or more evidence or more fingerprints or more anything but that simply wasn't the case and news spread fast worldwide that a beautiful little girl had been taken out of her bed and everybody started speculating as to what could possibly have happened. So let's get into the original theories. Do you kill your daughter? No, no, never. And you know, there's nothing with any logic that could, you know, you'd have to start with why. You know, how, when, who, and there's just simply, you know, the answer to any of these things is there's nothing to suggest anything. Right away, plenty of people, including law enforcement, kind of were looking towards the McCann family, thinking that they may have had something to do with this. Initially, the public like held on to every single word of Jerry and Kate McCann, and they felt as though their lack of emotion was a really telling sign or a red flag that perhaps they had involvement in the disappearance of her. I mean, as I mentioned, initially Kate McCann thought that Madeline had been taken, but yet when she ran out of the room or out of the apartment to go tell people, she left her twins in the apartment. Many moms said, hey, I would never leave my other children. I would take them with me to protect 
them. So that was a big red flag kind of off the get-go. So sniffer dogs were brought into the apartment as well and they picked up on scent behind the couch, in the McCann's closet, and even in the back, like the trunk area of the McCann's rental car. Now the McCann's were cleared from law enforcement, but there are still plenty of people who to this day believe that they did have something to do with it. How do you deal with the fact that more and more people seem to be pointing the finger at you saying the way you behave is not the way people would normally behave if their child is abducted and they seem to imply that you might have something to do with it? So, to, be, to be honest, I don't actually think that is the case. I think that's a very small minority of people that are criticising us. Um, you know. The facts are out there. We were dining very close to the children and we were checking on them very, very regularly. Um, you know, we are very responsible parents and we love our children so much and I think it's only a very few people that are actually um, criticising us. Now, they were both doctors and plenty of people speculated that perhaps they'd given Madeline something to put her to sleep and they'd overdone it and she passed away. But I see both sides of that. On one, I can understand people saying that they would have access to medication to put her to sleep. But on the other hand, a part of me is like, well, they're doctors. Wouldn't they know how much she should be given to go to sleep and not pass away? So there was just a whole bunch of conversations revolving around the McCann family and thinking that they had something to do it. At one point, they even said that the other families were in on it as well, so they wouldn't have to deal with it. But the McCann family would later sue for defamation with the insinuation that they had killed their daughter, claiming that they were innocent from the very beginning and all they want is Madeline's safe return. Another theory was that perhaps Madeline had wandered off, that maybe she'd gotten up out of bed, realized her parents weren't there and the back door was open, maybe she'd have wandered off. But then you have to think about the fact that the window was open. And would a three-year-old be capable of opening up the window and climbing out of the window? And if she had wandered off, would she have been able to even open up the door? I mean, she was three years old, but who really knows? And then there was the theory that Madeline had been kidnapped. An Irish couple actually came forward named Martin and Mary Smith, claiming that they too had seen a little girl being carried by a man. She was in pink pajamas with blonde hair and fair skin. And they said that they found it rather unusual too, but didn't think too much of it. They described the man as not looking like a tourist and somewhere between five foot seven to five foot eight. Now what's interesting about this is that this is the second claim about a little girl in pink pajamas being carried by a man. And the pajamas that Madeline wore that night that she had disappeared was a pink pajama top with ER on it and white pajama pants with ER on it as well. So could it be that they did in fact see Madeline being carried away? The top is a, a pink top and it has the character Eeyore on and short sleeves. And the bottoms, as you can see, are, are white with a small floral pattern and Eeyore again on the bottom right of the leg. So these are actually, apart from the size and the button at the back, which Madeline's doesn't have, these are actually the pajamas that Madeline was wearing when she was taken. I mean, if you think about it, their routine was so strict. Even the servers knew that they were leaving their kids alone and checking on them every 20 to 30 minutes. So would it be that unusual that somebody would observe this and realize that there was a window of time that they could go in and take a child? I mean, it's not too far-fetched. A man named Robert Murat was also named a suspect at one point, but he was later taken off of the list. He was absolutely devastated by what those claims had done to him and his family's lives and the destruction it had caused. And he too went after those people who dug his name through the mud. They dug into absolutely anybody they could, including hotel employees, but none of these leads went anywhere. At one point, it truly seemed as though there wasn't going to be any answers as to what happened to her or any closure for her family. A lot of people feared because they'd taken so long to act on getting the news out there that she'd been taken, that, that Madeline had been taken to an undisclosed location and that she was never going to be seen by her family again. They thought that she actually entered the trafficking ring. But then last year, the media covered the case again, except this time with a new break in the case. Please, please do not hurt her. Please don't scare her. We beg you to let Madeline come home. That authorities in Germany have started digging at a location near the city of Hanover. Uh, they say this is in connection 
uh, with the disappearance of uh, uh, the young girl, Madeleine McCann. Now everybody's jaws dropped when news broke that there was a break in the Madeleine McCann case and a suspect that they believe did it. The German authorities identified a 43-year-old German sex offender as the main suspect in Madeleine's abduction, and they said they were investigating. The suspect, Christian Brockner, is in prison in Germany. He's believed to have been in the area where Madeleine was last seen while she was on holiday in Portugal. So who is Christian and why is he identified as a suspect? And what is it they think he did with Madeleine? The new suspect in the Madeleine McCann case has been described as strange and intimidating by people in the Portuguese village where he stayed around the time of the child's disappearance in 2007. One resident claimed people were terrified of the man, identified by the German authorities as Christian B, because he carried a gun. So Christian was born in Germany in 1976, but moved to Portugal in his late teens. Several people remember him to be angry and not trustworthy, and that he just gave them the heebie-jeebies, like something was off about him. One neighbor said he squatted in a nearby house without paying rent and left it ransacked in a terrible state when he departed two years before Madeline's disappearance. Christian has something like 17 convictions against him in Europe, including ones to do with children. And honestly, you guys, if you dig into this dude, he is just a terrible human being. Like, I don't like to say that often because we all make mistakes, but the things that he has done is disturbing and unthinkable. We're not even gonna get into it. Like, just to give you an idea, in 2019, he was convicted for the 2005 assault of a 72 year old woman in Prada Luge. And then he was sentenced to seven years for that even though he was already in prison serving time for drug offenses. Now a lot of people say that he pries on people who are weak as in children or the elderly which is absolutely sick and twisted and wrong and disturbing. Like if you looked into what he did to that 72 year old woman, it is heartbreaking. Like I can't even fathom that there are human beings like this out there. And guess what? He wasn't far at all from the Luge Ocean Club. You guys, Christian bought a big camper van and was bragging to people saying, I can transport children in this. And this was just months before the disappearance of Madeline McCann. Christian is also said to have chillingly added, if nobody can find them, nobody can catch you which is disgusting. Now authorities have said they have substantial evidence against him, you guys, but they haven't released what this evidence is yet because they don't want him to know what they have on him. Which actually reminds me of the Delphi Snapchat murders that we got into in a previous video where they're not releasing how the girls died because only the killer knows, so I can understand this tactic. Christian was based in a ramshackle farmhouse just a short drive from the Ocean Club. And the night that Madeline went missing in 2007, Christian made a phone call in the area that she went missing from. So he was in that vicinity when she went missing. So let's get into the new theory. Since the night she disappeared, her anguished but unbroken parents, Kate and Jerry, have never let the world forget their daughter. But the evil that befell Maddie may now have a name. Christian Bruckner. Now it's said that they haven't come across any evidence to suggest that Madeline is alive, which is absolutely heartbreaking. They said, based off the knowledge we have, we assume that Maddie McCann is actually dead adding there's no reasonable doubt that the girl had died. The lead investigator said that the evidence that they have against Christian is incredibly substantial and that he is fully confident that he will be charging Christian Brockner with the killing of Madeline McCann. Investigators explain, the result of our investigation does not point in any way to the possibility the suspect may have kept Madeline alive, saying we don't have forensic evidence, but we have other evidence. The lead investigator said, and I quote, if you knew the evidence we had, you would come to the same conclusion as I do. Adding, what we have so far doesn't allow any other conclusion at all. They say that they can't tell the public yet what it is that they have because they don't want him to know what they have on him, but that what they had leads to no other ending than the death of Madeline McCann, which is so sad. Though we do know that they found within a secret lair of his in a plastic bag, hard drives, and USBs with a reported sum eight thousand pictures and videos, some of which are of crimes he's committed. 
So many people believe that perhaps they found videos and pictures of Madeleine McCann, though they've yet to disclose that. It's also been revealed though that a tiny piece of blue fabric that's being held in the vaults of a Portuguese forensic lab could provide the vital link between Christian and Madeleine McCann. The material comes from a bedspread that was draped over the bed where Madeleine McCann was missing from. And while they weren't able to pull a full DNA sample at the time, they're hoping that with the advancement of technology, they'll be able to identify whose DNA that was. And Kate and Jerry's lawyer says that he's going to be speaking with Portuguese law enforcement and asking to see the evidence pointing to Madeline McCann's potential murder. So basically, they have identified a new suspect. They supposedly have in their hands substantial evidence proving that he had to do with Madeline McCann's disappearance and they do not believe that Madeline McCann is alive. They believe that she was killed. But what's next in this case? If the German authorities do have video proving Madeleine's death would be the last piece of the puzzle. And for Jerry and Kate McCann, the final terrible truth. A truth that may already be known. No charges have yet been brought against Christian over Madeleine's disappearance from Pride de Luge on May 3rd, 2007. Christian maintains that he's had no involvement in the disappearance at all. And Christian's lawyer believes it will be unlikely for them to go to trial as the evidence that they have is circumstantial in his words. But bear in mind, they have not released what evidence they truly have. The case is still being updated and Christian claims his innocence even up until now. Hopefully there will be a trial and we will find out what happened to Madeline McCann, although I'm not sure that we really want to know. But I do think that there should be closure for the family, especially because if he is the one who did this, this poor family has been painted as these monsters for so long with people believing that they had involvement in this. And I think even for their own peace of mind, it would be really important for them to know what truly happened their daughter and set the record straight worldwide. As of right now, Christian is still in prison and we are awaiting more evidence and a potential trial. But I mean, even the fact that they seem so sure that he had involvement is enough to give me hope that soon justice will be served, the truth will come out and there will be closure for the McCann family. Well, you guys, that is the update in the Madeline McCann case. I would absolutely love to know what you guys think of this. As I mentioned, this just broke last year, so there's so much more that will be released soon. If there's anything substantial that releases, I will definitely do an update video. But I wanna know from you guys, do you think that Christian is responsible for the disappearance of Madeline McCann? Or what are your theories that you are currently sticking to? Let me know them down in the comment section below, and I will definitely be replying because this is something that I want to hear all of your thoughts and opinions on and that is it for today's video. If you guys are new to my channel or you're just not yet subscribed but you do enjoy my videos I would love it more than you will ever know if you would go ahead and click that subscribe button and please give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Remember my loves to do all things with kindness and until next time I love you.